हाँ ओके हाय टाइम वी आर वी आर नेक्स्ट टू द जनरल पोस्ट ऑफिस इन फ्रंट वी आर दिस यूज टू बी रियो नाउ पिज्जा हट एंड वी आर टेकिंग अ वॉक इन टू वन ऑफ दीज लेन्स पैरल टू द पोस्ट ऑफिस पैरल पर पेंटिकुलर वॉट एवर स्मॉल शॉप्स सेलिंग लोकल स्नैक्स नॉट स्नैक्स स्वीट्स कारवेला रन बाय माई फ्रेंड कालूस नोरोना नो रिलेशन वेनी सो दे डू अ लॉट ऑफ पोस्टल पैकिंग पोस्टल पैकिंग या पोस्टल पैकिंग because the post office is close by and a lot of people use the local service to send parcels to different parts of india and overseas pen shops on a sunny day this place looks really bright colorful it's uh, called san tome san tome san tome is not yet not yet fontaines fontaines is a little bit ahead Hundred or two hundred meters, maybe. And Fontaines has been called the Latin Quarter of Goa. <coughs> Aldankar Offset Printers, a small printing press here, which has survived. Okay, so what am I doing here today? I'm showing you the Fleet Street of Goa, the Fleet Street that was, and uh, probably no one even noticed. Not it. Noticed it. <laughs> Sorry, when it was there, but I'm trying to recall what was there. Okay, so this building here, which says Kolwalkar today, the top floor was the offices of the Goan Weekly. The Goan Weekly was run by Matani Saldana. It's totally changed. It was very run down in the 80s. So it was very run down. Sorry, sorry about that. It was very run down in the eighties when the Goan Weekly was run out of here, and Matani uh, Saldana, this political leader, who was part of the opposition for a long, 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 long time, till he very, very suddenly changed parties and. Uh, Joined the BJP just before passing away. He rose to become deputy chief minister of Goa in that post, but he was a dissenter for a long time, and he understood the need to have alternative media voices. So he started the Goan Weekly. Goan Weekly was run in Santines for a little while, then here, then here. I have stories to tell of these places as we go along. There's a girls' hostel next door. so the goan weekly was this dissent paper that was highlighting people's issues in the 80s and i remember one fine day we were going to church in saligaon and we were cycling down the road and we were shocked to find that the coconut trees on one side of this lovely coconut fringed grove fringed road coconut fringed road was actually had all been slaughtered all the trees had been slaughtered and they were lying in the field and that was for the extension of the road which was tiny then extension of the road and uh, building a building a broader road and i clicked a photo and i carried it and i sent it to the goan weekly and they published it and things like that oops i made a big mistake i made a big mistake this was the goan weekly not that this building the top story of that building i showed you the wrong building just forgive me okay so this was the goan weekly now it's very much just spruced up gentrified if you want so in this place in this small pocket of 200 square meter 
uh, one square kilometer maybe you had a lot of newspapers publications what is this adventure hippie graffiti graffiti here we come so you had a lot of uh, presses newspapers publications printing houses printing houses from those times and i think it's interesting that within this small space you had four or five different publications run out of here no one called it the fleet street of goa i would jokingly call it that because there were so many presses and and newspapers from this small area now the center of gravity has shifted more towards santine is the the western end of panjim this is the eastern end another printing press here popular printing press okay this was not a newspaper or anything just a press but when i was doing some some uh, research i kind of spoke to the daughter or daughter in law i'm not very sure from that family and she spoke maybe daughter she spoke about how her father used to have all these books and booklets and this receipt books and all that lining up his home in santa cruz for some reason santa cruz the village just outside panjim and mirses had a lot of presses there too and a lot of people working the presses were based there so this is a no development zone kind of once in a way violated still if you have the cloud and the uh, homes are painted in the old colors i think the paints are sponsored or i'm not very sure someone saying praise at a cross so it's a colorful part of panjim no doubt colorful people resent the fact that they have to meet tourists here that especially true of Fant of uh, fontanes where you have lot of tourists coming with lot of cameras people like me okay exclude me Okay. So here again another street. This is Confident. It used to be it is a prominent advertising agency. Okay, it says in this house lived Antonio Zevia Gomez Pereira. He did a lot for his land. as a advocate journalist and politician 1880 to 1957 so confident is run by the cutinos and it was an ad agency it is an ad agency which has played a prominent role in the goa press some small restaurants used to be here avanti just in front of us homes of musicians that i know kaitan 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 who was part of remo's beat four passed away lobato fari another musician a famous uh, tailoring shop well fit related to some friends of mine okay but since we are looking at the presses today we'll stick to that Beep. 
so here you can see the herald okay this is the paper they call themselves overald it used to be overald then they shrunk the two o's and called it herald and again it's back to the old name of overald since 1900 it's a very old paper uh this is where i started in 83 1983 the ownership of the paper went into the hands of the fernandeses who were local printers around 1960s mid mid 60s or yeah before that it was owned by the old ownership and uh, it was a portuguese paper till 1983 and then it shifted to being english an english broadsheet and it grew and it grew quite a bit it's uh now they've got a marathi paper an english paper which sometimes carries a bit of konkani a bit of portuguese on its pages and a tv channel called hcn it it, it has been the training school of training school of many journalists entering the field entering the field Okay, turning around. The place has changed quite a bit. It's quite gentrified, so it's easy to get lost. Sorry about that. Whoops! 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 So you know, part of this reflects the decay that this place went through in the 60s. I guess a lot of Catholic Goans from here moved out and probably went to places like Portugal and all that. Earlier. to my left was the printwell press another historic institution it ran from the 60s it's here somewhere here maybe this building if i'm not mistaken ground floor started in the 60s by dan dantes father of norman dantes it was a print printing press but they they had a they had a partnership with the first magazine the first most prominent magazine of those days goa today so dan dantes was a partner in goa today which was started by lambert mascarenas and the third partner was florian machado if i'm not mistaken so they had a letter press here there were a lot of books in those times the monthly magazine a uh, very nice hand setting very neat neat work then they went into offset later on glen ran the press glen glen the elders the younger son ran the press till a few years back they went into into uh, letter into offset but it was very neat printing okay now here is the diario the noit diario the noit the diary of the night of the evening an evening paper exactly here i remember when we were working in the 80s probably 85 or 86 and herald was being shifted from one place to the other for a little while we were we were stationed here this was the office no and uh, yeah this was a small office if i'm not mistaken the printing press was opposite in those days it was not being used as a printing press but some equipment and all was still there probably in one of these buildings it's not uh, it's not been opened for some time obviously but the arivia no it was a portuguese evening of one of the four or five portuguese papers existing in 1961 when the transition transfer of power happened seizure of power whatever you want to call it happened and uh, luis de menezes was running it he was an old man who always wore a suit that's how i remember him 
and the papers the portuguese papers all folded up in a little while they all folded up generally the argument is that they couldn't keep up with the times and they they couldn't manage the technology and they couldn't manage the shifting reality and whatever but when i was writing a paper i chose to focus on the death of herald herald h e r a l d without a second o without a without initial o not o herald but just herald and that was a fascinating story you know because the way a controversy was engineered the way it was shut down so i can agree that each newspaper is generally a supporter of the establishment so when things changed in december 1961 the papers also were were found themselves on the wrong side of history and they were kind of uh, kind of uh, you know on the back foot then so but how they closed down is a is is a story waiting to be told waiting to be studied i feel so for example herald was suddenly closed abruptly there were protest in april of march or april of 2000 sorry 1962 19 one thousand nine hundred sixty two and uh, within fifteen days or something the editor and owner editor come owner just quit and left and moved over to portugal so that was that uh, there was another paper from margaon called avida avida meaning the life and that paper stayed on till the late 60s if i'm not mistaken they tried having some pages in english konkani and they merged with deepti something you know the the exact history is all written about it's there but it didn't survive for too long that i didn't know it they are you know it the evening paper also closed uh the main printing press of those days for books was tipografia rangel in bastora so they struggled till the 80s they struggled and then they kind of folded up they folded up but uh, the current generation uh, dr jaim rangel always have this has his dream of keeping it alive keeping the dream alive and uh, and making sure that it publishes something it has been doing a occasional book uh, they they were a family run initiative and i think 3 4 i don't know how many generations actually ran the the publication so that was uh, typography ranjal in bastora i'm talking about printers printers and publishers they were not they were into books books and magazines they were not into into newspapers official magazines like uh, the Institute Manager's Breganza magazine, or maybe the Archdiocese publications, or something like that. They were into that. Uh, here, here, that's what we. I think we've seen all of them. We've seen all of uh, these small papers here, and and and. Uh, okay, so we were talking about how the newspapers died. The Portuguese language newspapers died. Goan owned but Portuguese language. So Eral was sold in the 60s to J D Fernandes, which was a printing house, and they took it over and they ran it as a Portuguese tabloid for a long time till 83, and then they decided to shift to English and uh, they did well for the change. But again, I mean, as you know, to be successful in the press, particularly the newspaper press. one has to be political and take sides and play games and all whatever it takes to to make it work so that's that so that's the only paper that has survived as a english paper and uh, this is the story of the fleet street of panjim but panjim called panji in portuguese panaji in the misspelling of post 1961 and of course in konkani ponje the post office is just ahead hardly 50 meters from here <coughs> so all the magazines whichever are published would go to the post office would go to the post office and uh, get get routed via that way
okay what's this eco jenny cleaning services so the post office uh, is this central point it was earlier a much vi more vibrant institution unfortunately its services are particularly badly run don't let me hear them say don't let them hear me say it this is a bank post office bank so the main popular service is the is the registered post but you got to wait for a long time before you can get your letters accepted and all that no unfortunately it's badly mismanaged how's your business they always having a queue here they should take their speed the registered post work more seriously across is the very scenic headquarters of the anjum post office and that side is the casa de moeda the mint house now the family home of dr louis dies some of the old shops still with their old world charm but again this used to be the main bus stop at one stage so it was very a place where everyone thronged to lot of restaurants and buses and hustle and bustle and all now it's quieter now it's quieter so the lanes are very much like a chocolate slab with all its squares perpendicular squares so it's easy to get lost i remember once we were trying to find uh, the herald in the night my brother and myself on the bike and we must have spent about half an hour through all these lanes going up and down up and down and up and down and up and down and never finding it finally we did find it of course so that's that we are back to the herald i can't end without telling you one story here again the post office the back of the post office they used to have a 24 hour railway sorting office somewhere here rms where they would accept letters at any time of day or night but that is now shifted to porvori so this is a story i promised to tell we had finished the night shift at the herald and anil was a driver and he was very sleepy the rest of us made sure to sleep in the day the wind there's a lot of wind here so i'm sure it's affecting the sound recording it's a very windy area after lunch break everyone would come and stand here for breeze as they would say so anyway so anil was a driver and we were waiting for him to drop us to the ferry because there was there was no bridge in those days the bridge had collapsed and the, we had to take a ferry ride home and he kept saying wait wait i'm sleepy wait i'm sleepy so we just slid a hand into his pocket took out the jeep keys and started riding it and sorry and got into the jeep and i don't know what came in over me but i just thought it would be great fun to start the put the key in and start the jeep and one thing led to the other and i tried turning the gears and they worked and the jeep started moving it was there next to the door and the jeep just lunged forward and i lost total control of it and it reached somewhere here and our journalist friend the late choppy francis ribero realized what was happening and he kept running behind the jeep and trying to give me instructions <coughs> but the more he shouted the more i got nervous and the more i pressed the accelerator instead of the brake and the jeep was just lunging forward and i just couldn't control it and it almost banged into a pole which was exactly here had it to bang into that pole that would have been the end of my career in 1980 probably 84 85 fortunately it didn't it didn't and my career was saved by 6 inches of luck that's it for today i hope you like this tour of the fleet street of panjim if i missed any places i'm going to 
I'm going to mention it in the notes. It's quite possible there are so many nooks and crannies here that are easy to miss out on. But I'll do that. Thanks.